Hello, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you how to test a typical microwave oven's high voltage capacitor using two different methods, right here on ES Repair. And welcome to another episode of ES Repair. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. As you can see, I have the microwave capacitor and my digital multimeter uh, arranged so I can show you how to test these uh, capacitors. Now, these are high voltage capacitors, and before you remove them, from the microwave, be sure that they are completely discharged. You don't want to have any sort of voltage in the capacitor. Now, keep in mind that these capacitors do have a 10 mega ohm resistor built into them. Now, I know a lot of people has wrote in to me telling me that there's no resistor in them, but yes, there is, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now, as I said, when you remove these, be sure you completely discharge them. You can use a well-insulated needle nose pliers and short the two terminals together. As you can see here, I do have uh, a yellow alligator, alligator clip connecting the two terminals together. So I'm wanting to keep this uh, discharged throughout the process so I can show you how to uh, two ways you can test these capacitors. Now I did put up a previous video that shows how to test a high voltage diode. Now you want to remember that when you, uh, after you're done testing these and you put it back in the microwave or you install the, the replacement, be sure that you rewire it back to the way it was before you remove the capacitor or the diode. Now to get started I'm going to show you two ways. And the simplest way is to use a capacitance meter. Now, this meter here does have a capacitance tester to it. Now, not all meters do, which I will show you an alternative to using the capacitive uh, meter. Now, it would be crude, but it will give you a basic idea if the capacitor is working correctly. Now, first, let's do the capacitance test. Uh, I'm going to flip my meter to capacitance test. Let me turn the uh, light on. Now, as you can see, right now it's showing zero microfarads. This is because I have the yellow alligator clips uh, shorting out the terminals. Now, I've got the alligator clips connected to the black one to the black test lead and I got the red one connected to the red test lead. Now you can get uh, adapters for your test leads that has the alligator clips on the ends. That will come in handy if you want or you can use uh, the typical alligator uh, wire clips like I'm using here. Now it's going to show that it's zero because I had the terminal shorted. Now what happens when you remove When you remove the shorting terminal, notice that the meter now says 
0.948 microfarads. Now you'll see up here at the top that it's showing microfarad symbol, which is the micro sign and then the F, capital F. That shows that we're measuring microfarads. Now if you look at the capacitor, the capacitor will identify the voltage rating, which in this case is 2100 volts AC, and its capacitance should be around 0.91 microfarads. Now, they're going to be off just slightly, but not very much, but it should relatively be close to the stated microfarads that's listed on there. Now, as you can see, this is showing that the, micro, the capacitor is good. Now, let me show you another way that you can test the capacitor and you can also test the resistor that's built into these capacitors. Now, let me short out the capacitor again. I'm going to switch to ohms. Now, this is going to use an ohm meter. Now, you're going to need at least a 10 or 15 ohm, uh, uh, mega ohm, uh, ohm meter. It must be able to measure at least 10 to 15 mega ohms. And the reason for this is because the resistor inside these is a 10 mega ohm resistor. The purpose of the resistor is to automatically discharge the capacitor when the power or the voltage and current is removed from the capacitor. In other words, when the microwave turns off. The diode is designed to automatically discharge the capacitor. Now, as, as a safety precaution, if the resistor does go bad, there is no way for it to discharge the capacitor. This is the reason why you must make sure that the capacitor is discharged before you handle it. Because you don't know if that resistor is working or not. This test will show you. Now, currently it's showing that I'm only got 0.7 ohms, which is normal because it's actually going through this uh, yellow alligator clip wire. Now, if I was to remove it, the test meter, now if you're using the digital ones, it will jump. But if you're using the analog version, you'll watch it start gradually going up. Now, here for the digital ones, you'll notice that it starts going down. You want to wait till it gets down to around 10 mega ohms, and it will stabilize. Now, remember, up here it will show the capital M for mega ohms. Now, as you can see, it stopped right around 9.76. If you're testing the capacitor, without the resistor, the resistance will automatically go to affinity or over the tester's limit. This is because the capacitor is fully charged. The higher the charge of the capacitor, the more electrons that it absorbs, the higher the resistance it creates. Now, the reason this won't go past 9.76 is because that 10 mega ohm resistor is keeping it regulated. Now, watch what happens when I remove one of the test leads. It goes to over the limit. Now, plug it back in. Notice how the resistance dropped and now it's slowly going back up. This means that the, the resistor or the capacitor is charging again. The higher the microfarads at the capacitor, the longer it takes for it to charge the capacitor. Notice how it's starting to slow down now? It's reaching the limit because of the 10 mega ohm resistor it's built inside. Now, this is how you can test if the resistor 
and the capacitor is working correctly. This is where it should be reading at. And all you have to do, again, is just temp briefly disconnect the, uh, a lead, and then plug it back in, and you'll notice how it drops. That's because that 10 mega ohm resistor was depleting the charge in the capacitor while the test lead was disconnected. But now with the test lead connected, now the, charge, the capacitor is recharging. And because of the 10 mega ohm resistor, it will keep it from charging all the way. This allows you to determine if the capacitor is charging and if the 10 mega ohm resistor is working. If it does go up to infinity, then the 10 mega ohm resistor is shot and it needs to be replaced. The capacitor. Now, if you're showing uh, no resistance whatsoever, just as I've displayed here, then the capacitor is shot and needs to be replaced. However, if you are reading a short, that means the capacitor is also dead and needs to be replaced. Well, this concludes this video by ES Repair. I have shown you two different ways that you can test these high voltage capacitors commonly found in microwave ovens. Now keep in mind that you can replace these for about $65 brand new or you can also replace them out of a junked microwave oven. But keep in mind that when you're replacing these, be sure that the capacitor is fully discharged and you rewire it to the original configuration before you remove the capacitor. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.